Banks are just casinos with extra steps. In this video, we're going to talk about the business function of both institutions, and we're going to see exactly how it is a casino makes money in randomness and how a bank makes money making a market. We'll talk about the probability and statistics involved, and we'll take a look at some animations to really understand how this works. Pretty much every asset in this industry comes with some sort of premium. The only assets in this space that I know of that don't are my Jupyter Notebooks. This Jupyter Notebook will be linked in the description below. I will also post it to the Quant Guild Library on GitHub where you can find all of my Jupyter Notebooks and associated YouTube videos along with all of the source code for my Quant builds. At the top of this Jupyter Notebook, you'll notice some related Quant Guild videos applying probability and statistics to finance and trading. This idea of time series analysis, retail versus institutional trading, trading versus investing, the idea of accumulating expected value or an edge over a series of trades over time, and of course the difference between quant and discretionary trading and acting with some sort of optimal policy function. I highly recommend you check these videos out as they're extremely relevant to this idea of banks operating as a casino. Moreover, these videos certainly take a lot of effort to create, so if you'd like to help support the channel so I can continue to create videos just like this one, please like, comment, subscribe, share. It helps me out tremendously. It is always greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to master your quantitative skills, check out quantguild.com. We have an absolutely massive update rolling out towards the end of October. A lot of exciting things to look forward to. Without further ado, let's get started with this idea of a casino and see exactly how it is they make money in randomness. We've all heard of this idea of the house edge, but what is it exactly? And how does it ensure that a casino is gonna continue to make money in the long run? Nobody knows what the outcome of any one game is going to be. If I spin a roulette wheel, I don't know if it's gonna be red, black, or green, and neither does the casino. We need some way to be able to evaluate these games that involve randomness. And this is exactly where probability and statistics come into play. From probability and statistics, we have this idea of an expected value. The equation for an expected value is given to us here by the law of total expectation. It's actually really easy to compute our edge or the house edge. All we need is the probability of winning, the probability of losing, the average payoff if we win, and the average payoff if we lose. We throw all those pieces together and we get the overall expected value. I can apply this to a whole bunch of casino games. Now I can apply this to roulette, craps, and slots. And the criteria for making money is very simple. If the expected value or our edge is greater than zero, we're going to make money in the long run so long as people play on the other side of that game. And if you take a look at the expected value for the house for each one of these games, you're going to find that it is positive. We get 5.26% for roulette, 1.4% for craps, and 2 to 15% for slots. So it's certainly good to be the house. But what exactly does this look like if we have a whole bunch of players interacting with these games in our casino? How can we expect our wealth path to evolve over time? And how do we expect players' wealth paths? To evolve over time. Let's simulate a bunch of players playing roulette, craps, and slots at our casino and see the evolution of both the player wealth path and the casino wealth path over a series of plays of each of these games. What we'll find here in this particular simulation is that roulette was our best performing game. Every single one of the players that played roulette went bankrupt before the 100th play, so we ended up capping out and nobody was left to take money from as the casino. Looks like slots was the second best performing game and craps was the worst performing game. Being the casino is not without drawdown and losses. You can see actually for the first almost 80 plays, craps was actually negative. The casino was losing money on craps, but it's diversified. Games are independent. There's no correlation structure. Craps is independent of slots. Slots is independent of roulettes. The casino is diversified in that it's accumulating eggs, not for just one game, but for a series of games, not for just one counterparty, but a whole bunch of players. And that is precisely what we see here. So all of these paths actually combine to form the total casino wealth path here. You can see it accumulated almost $20,000 in these 100 plays alone. That is crazy. And that is exactly what the house edge is. Every single play, statistically, players are disadvantaged and they're going to lose money if they continue to engage in that game. If we take a look at the proportion of players that went bankrupt 
by the 100th play in each of these games. In roulette, 100% of the players are bankrupt. In craps, 80%. And in slots, 90%. Certainly good to be the casino. And that is how they make money. They make money by taking it from their counterparties, people who are actively engaging in these casino games. Casinos have risk exposure. Anytime you engage in a system that is random or uncertain, you're going to have risk and you're going to need to manage it. So how does a casino manage their risk? Well, they have table limits. They cap max bets to limit potential losses per play. This is also to avoid any sort of statistical advantage that players could have, like martingaling roulette. Position limits. We restrict the total exposure across all tables and games. Bankroll management. We maintain sufficient capital reserves to pay out counterparties if we have a streak of bad luck. Diversification. We have multiple games. We don't just have roulette. Surveillance. We monitor good players, cheating and fraud. You'll get kicked out of a casino if you start to do too well. Insurance. Maybe you have coverage for large payouts or jackpots. In any case, the casino makes money by accumulating edge, accumulating positive expected value. And in doing that, they have to manage these risks that come along with that exposure. So casinos make money by accumulating expected value over a series of plays. Banks, how do they make money? Well, they make money by accumulating expected value over a series of trades. They make money making a market. Banks act as market makers, quoting prices to clients. This is where pricing comes in. This is the same idea as probability and statistics from the casino. We're just applying it now to trying to derive the price of some sort of financial contract. Typically, we'll look at something like an option contract or an exotic contract, and we're going to look to make a market on it. So I pick some sort of pricing model. I go about calibrating it to liquid instruments. I extrapolate an exotic price, and then I bake in some liquidity, credit, model adjustments for profit, and I can quote a two-way for that particular contract. My objective here is to accumulate the positive expected value by quoting that bid-ask spread. I am trying to quote a spread and then as soon as I engage in a transaction, I have a counterparty, I'm hedging away that risk to try to collect that spread. That is my goal. Effectively, what we're doing is we're always buying low and selling high or selling high and buying back lower, immediately hedging and trying to collect on that spread that we're quoting. We're going to do this a very large number of times. And if we can do this effectively, such that we don't accumulate too many transaction costs, we're going to be able to make a whole bunch of money. This is the business function of a bank. This is not engaging in speculative trading. This is literally a business function. You are making a market. And when you make that market, your payoff is collecting that spread. That is effectively how you make money and that is your reward for serving that business function. Instead of simulating players in a casino, we can simulate trades on a trading desk. At our bank, we have a fixed income desk, Forex, equities, options. I gave you an example earlier about how to go about quoting a price for an exotic option and then going about hedging it to collect on that spread. The way that each desk is going to go about serving that business function is going to slightly differ, but the overall principle remains the same. We're looking to collect on that spread, collect and accumulate that theoretical expected value. And if we can do this effectively, then we can make a whole bunch of money for our bank, just like the casino. What we can see here is each one of these desks is going to accumulate that positive expected value, and all of them in aggregate are going to contribute to the overall bank wealth path, just like we saw above when each one of the casino games contributed in a positive way to the total casino wealth path. Just like the business function of a casino, a bank or market maker is not without risk. For example, if you're hedging and the market moves aggressively away from your position, you could be forced to rehedge. Depending on the direction of your position, you could accumulate a loss and you'll definitely accumulate transaction costs. If you do this too often, then you're going to eat away at the theoretical spread you're trying to profit from and you'll end up losing money. So this is not a risk-free profit. This is a business function 
and you need to act optimally to accumulate the expected value over a series of trades for your desk. So you're not without risk. We gave an example in the context of hedging. What are some other risks that we need to be aware of and how do we manage them as a bank? Well, we need to set trade size limits, meet capital requirements, diversify your portfolio, hedge dynamically, and of course, limit counterparty exposure. Remember, whether we're operating as a casino or a bank, we are trying to accumulate this edge, this positive expected value over a series of plays or a series of trades. We don't want an outsized bet on any one game or any one trade. We can lose all of that money and it's going to take us a while to recoup those losses. That's not where we profit. We profit from making independent bets with positive expected value, reasonably sized bets so we can accumulate all of that wealth. That is how the casino makes money and that is exactly how the bank makes money money. Some closing thoughts and future topics. Here's your executive summary. Key similarities between banks and casinos. Effectively, banks are casinos with extra steps. Both earn profits from the spread. Banks earn from the bid-ask spread and the casino earns from the house edge. They're both looking for a high volume of small transactions. That's going to be the key to profitability here. We're not looking for oversized positions. You can accumulate tremendous losses in the short run, and you may not even make it to the long run if you make these outsized bets, even if you have this positive expectancy. Both face tail risk in that sense from extreme events or market moves. Key differences between banks and casinos, banks make money in risk neutrality. Counterparty outcome is hedged. We're looking to profit on that spread. Unlike casinos, they make money in the randomness by taking expected value, taking money from their counterparty. In terms of risk, banks face different and probably worse systematic risk relative to a casino as casinos operate independent games. They're not just stochastically independent, they're physically independent. When you spin a roulette wheel versus rolling a die, you have physical independence. That always implies stochastic independence. So the risks that they face are fundamentally different and are the ways they go about managing them. Some future topics, technical videos, and other discussions to look forward to. I would like to do this video on advanced Markov chains, absorbing states, communication classes, ergodicity, stationary distributions, something you would see in a class on stochastic processes, break out the iPad, work a whole bunch of problems. This is definitely different from what we usually do. If you'd like to see this, let me know in the comments below. I'd also like to do videos on stochastic processes, maybe dedicated videos for Brownian motion, arithmetic, geometric Brownian motion, and then build to that idea of deriving the Black-Scholes equation, getting to that PDE, looking at analytical and numerical solutions. I know I also want to talk about this Kalman filter and non-stationarity. This is a big problem in quant modeling. I'd also like to maybe talk about more qualitative topics like most popular quant models for informed trading, buy side versus sell side quants, things like that. Again, very different from what we usually do. If you're interested in any of these topics, please let me know in the comments below. I'd also like to continue with our quant builds. I have this idea for a Kalman filter model with regime dynamics. Since we've already covered Markov chains and hidden Markov models, I think this is something we can do as soon as we cover Kalman filters. I also have this idea of an automated delta neutral trading system. I've actually continued to build the infrastructure for this system, so we can look forward to that quant build in the near future future. And that's going to do it for this video explaining why banks are casinos just with extra steps. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you like this video and you want to see more like it in the future, please like, comment, subscribe, share. Again, it helps me out tremendously. It is greatly appreciated. I have been recording a tremendous amount of videos lately for the quant courses that are going to be released at the end of October. Over 20 hours of content in the first course. Very excited to release that one on quantguild.com. Lots to look forward to on that platform. A lot of really cool collaborations coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. I'll leave a link in the description below to our Discord if you'd like to connect with me and other quants in the Quant Guild community. Check out quantguild.com to master your quantitative skills and stay tuned for that massive October update. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.